All right, so we have seen message authentication codes. We also seen block ciphers. So we've solved two problems, right? Confidentiality and message authentication. So question is, can I combine both of them and obtain authenticated encryption? So the answer is yes, of course. So let's see how we can do it. Message authentication code is computed as a result of a complete pass over the data. If we provide both encryption and authentication, then we may require two passes over the data. We can combine these two operations to provide authenticated encryption. So now the picture is a little bit large compared to a block cipher. Now, as a secret part, I again use this, a secret key to an encryption algorithm, but I give more input. I have the plain text, which is need to be encrypted and a cipher text will be produced. I may need to introduce some randomization. So there will be a value called nonce, which is a random value that is used only once. And also I may need some data which needs to be authenticated, but not encrypted. Okay, this is called associated data. So your authenticated encryption algorithm can take these four inputs and as an output, it will produce ciphertext and a tag. So when the person receives the ciphertext and tag, they will use the same nonce. They will have the associated data because it is not secret and transmitted as a plain text. So from these parts, they will obtain the plain text and they will obtain a tag and they will check if those tags matches. If they match, then you know, we have obtained authenticated encryption. So let me talk a little bit about associated data because uh, generally we don't need it, but sometimes we may need it, okay? So if you have associated data, we call it authenticated encryption with associated data and it is abbreviated as AEAD, sorry. So we may need some information like headers to be authenticated, but not encrypted, okay? Thus the authenticated information can be processed before the decryption of the entire message. Such schemes are called authenticated encryption with associated data, abbreviated as AEAD. We may prefer these two operations to be performed in parallel. We may prefer these operations to be online. Namely, we can start performing the encryption and authentication operations as soon as some part of the message is available without the knowledge of the entire message or it is linked, okay? So these uh, terms like online and parallel are kind of important. So let me show you some older designs and then move on to newer ones, okay? So uh, CCM is one of the uh, popular ones. This is counter with cipher blockchain message authentication code. It performs two pass over the data. So this is two pass block cipher mode. It is an IEEE standard for wireless local area networks, appears in this special publication, SP800-38C, and tag is concatenated to the end of the ciphertext. Okay, let me show you the picture. Here, you have the plain text, okay? You use it like in the CBC mode and produce the tag, but then you encrypt counters and exhort with your plain text obtain a ciphertext. So you obtain the ciphertext here, obtain the tag here. So it is like double encryption because here you perform a lot of encryption operations here, but same amount of encryption here. This is why we call it two pass because you process the data once here to produce tag and you process it here to produce ciphertext, okay? So instead of this, if you use a Galois counter mode, we call it GCM, which is more popular and used almost everywhere. Idea is the same. You encrypt counters, then exhort with the plain text blocks. But also, if you have authenticated data, you also perform some Galois multiplication operations here, exhort it with the ciphertext, and initial counter is encrypted and finally exhort here. So you obtain ciphertext blocks here, authentication tag is here. So this is Galois counter mode of operation. So recall that when I was talking about Zoom. I showed you a secure, uh, screen to show you which algorithm Zoom uses for encryption. And there it said AES 256 GCM. So this is a mode of operation which produces also authentication, right? Because you produce tech. 
So this is like counter mode of operation, but it also produces tag. That is the main difference, okay? So again, this uh, mode generally used in our mobile phones for full disk encryption, like in Apple and Android phones, okay? iOS phones and Apple, uh, Android, sorry. So let's look at some of the kind of older versions. So here we are using a block cipher to produce both cipher text and tag. So question is, can I use a block cipher and a hash function together and produce Mac and cipher text, okay? So actually there is a method for like this. When the message authentication code is obtained by a hash function, the following methods are widely used. Mac and encrypt, Mac then encrypt, encrypt then Mac, okay? So let's show them with pictures. So in the Mac and encrypt, you have a secret key. Right, you encrypt your plain text with the secret key. For instance, maybe you are using a yes here, obtain the cipher text, but take this plain text and send it to hash function, but together with your key. So recall that a hash function do not use does not use a key. So here we are actually using something like HMAC, okay, which we have already seen, right? So here you are using your secret key is involved, and you obtain the tag. Here it is said as Mac, but here we are talking about the tag. So you send your cipher text and tag like this. So this is called Mac and encrypt, and it is adopted in the SSH protocol. So the person who receives the cipher text and Mac, decrypts the cipher text, obtain the plain text, then uses the HMAC here with the secret key again and check if the message authentication code matches. If not, then they drop the packet. But as you can see, we go a lot of trouble to check if it is correct or not. We obtain the plain text and so on. So uh, we will see better examples in a minute. And also, generally this is not advice. I mean, using the same input for two different algorithms in the past showed some weaknesses. Not for this mechanical encrypt, but in many different scenarios. Uh, using the input for two different algorithms for cryptographic algorithms generally causes some problems. So this is why, although we don't know any way to break this, generally, I mean, I wouldn't use it. So another option is to use the following. Here, Mac then encrypt. So you first perform the HMAC operation here. Of course, you can do something else if you want, but you know, uh, we are using the hash function with the secret key and take the plain text and obtain the tag here. You concatenate this tag to the end of your plain text then perform the encryption, okay? This is what is used in TLS 1.2 and prior to that version, okay? So in TLS 1.3, this wasn't used, okay? Uh, this is not used in TLS 1.3. So a little bit better, but again, what the person uh, does as follows, they obtain the cipher text, they decrypt it back, you know, take the plain text, put it in the hash function, calculate the Mac and check if it is correct or not. Again, too much trouble. So we have something better. This is called encrypt and Mac. This is nice because now you first encrypt, obtain the cipher text, but put the cipher text to the hash function with your secret key, obtain the message authentication code. So the person who receives this actually looks at the cipher text, calculates the tag and check if it is correct or not without performing the decryption operation. So if they don't match, they drop the packet. So you save the trouble of, you know, performing the decryption. So it is kind of more secure against both privacy and integrity attacks compared to the previous two. And Mac can be verified before decrypting the whole ciphertext. This is the nice thing. So some people thought that uh, TLS 1.3 will use this. And at the time of this TLS 1.3 preparation, there was a competition called Caesar competition, which is an authenticated encryption uh, competition. So I thought that the winner will be included in TLS 1.3, but they instead chose another algorithm called Chacha, and we will see in a minute. Yes, TLS 1.3 AEAD. So they chose Chacha Steam Cipher together with a message authentication called like Poly. 1305, which I will briefly explain what these are, okay? So, until TLS 1.3, 1 
we used always AES, okay? So in the, at the initial versions of SSL, we had RC4 and AES. RC4 is a stream cipher, which is badly broken. So nobody were using it. So Google said that, why not change it with another stream cipher? So they changed it with ChaCha. And a lot of people adopted this idea and then it became a standard with TLS 1.3. So why use ChaCha when you have AES? That is the question, right? So Intel processors, processors since Westmer in 2010 come with AES hardware instructions, AES NI, which make AES encryptions effectively free. Because at the hardware level, we can perform AES encryption. We already talked about this when we talk about block ciphers. So uh, we don't actually need ChaCha. But the thing is that our phones and tablets generally use ARM processors, which do not have this kind of hardware acceleration. So in those devices, Having an encryption algorithm that is, you know, more battery friendly or faster than AES might be good for your battery consumption, right? Actually, this was the reason why Google adopted it. And in their Chrome browser, they were using it on your mobile phones anyway for years. So since RZ4 is broken, Google replaced it with ChaCha 20 in Chrome around 2013. And TLS 1.3 uses the same idea with this time using this polynomial for the authenticated encryption. So it is a better friendly alternative to ASGCM. That is the idea. So ChaCha is actually a, a modification of Salsa. So let me briefly explain these algorithms. So it was designed by DJ Bernstein in 2005. There was an e-stream stream cipher competition. Salsa, I think, was one of the competitors. So in 2008, Bernstein modified this Salsa and named the new version ChaCha. So as you can see, these are Latin dance names. Actually, there are also other variants. Uh, other than these two, you can also have other dance names for these modifications of all these algorithms, okay? So Google selected ChaCha 20 and Poly 13.5 to replace RC4 in TLS. OpenSSH also has adapted to adapt these algorithms. ChaCha also used in random number generators in many operating systems like this, FreeBSD, OpenBSD, NetBSD, and so on. Linux kernel uses ChaCha 20 to generate data for non-blocking this uRandom device. So it is also used in random number generators. IEFT, IETF published a reference implementation for modified ChaCha. I will explain in a minute in this RFC. So use of ChaCha in IKE. Internet key exchange and IPsec have been proposed for standardization in this RFC and became to be used in TLS with this uh, proposal, RFC 7905. And Chacha is also used in VPN protocols and so on and so forth. So all of a sudden, Chacha become famous. So it works like this. This is the initial state. Uh, there are 16 words, like in the case of AES, but this time these are not bytes. They are 32-bit words. You fill the first row with a constant value. You put your key here. Then you put a position that is also some kind of a constant, and then put the nose. So here I said IET published a reference implementation for modified ChaCha. I think in that modified version, these positions are also used as nodes or something like that. Okay, So there's a very small difference. And the one round of Chacha works like this. At odd rounds, you take the columns as inputs. So you take four inputs here. And at even rounds, you take the rows. And they're processed like this. So assume that at the first round, you have take the first column. You take four words of 32 bit words. You put them here. And you perform these basic operations like modular addition, XOR, rotation, and so on. So this is just one round, but it is just for one column, right? Take this picture, copy it four times. This will be your one round. So since it is called Chacha 20, you repeat this 20 times, okay? Then at the end, you produce the key stream and exhort it with the plain text and obtain the cipher text. So uh, this polynomial, poly 1305, is used for tag generation. So I just put the pseudocode here just to tell you what the idea is. So this is just a polynomial. So here you can see that one is shifted left to 130 bits. Actually, this is an easy way to represent two to the 130, right? 
at the implementation level, this is what it means. So actually, this is a polynomial that is obtained by 2 to the 130, sorry, x to the power 130 minus 5. So you use it in, in a clever way to obtain the, so it's, this is message and the key. You use those bytes and obtain a tag at the end, okay? So this is how it is used in uh, TLS. So let me finish this with NIST lightweight cryptography standardization process. So this process started around 2015 uh, with a few workshops. So the uh, submission deadline for the competition was February 2019, sorry. Uh, the finalists were announced in 2020. And at the beginning of this year, 7th of February, NIST announced that they chose ASCOM for standardization. So now NIST have a lightweight authenticated encryption algorithm, okay? So we keep having workshops. We publish more results just to see how uh, good the ASCOM is, how fast it is, and so on. So any cryptanalysis results, any performance result at this level is really appreciated and we will see how much it will be adopted at the IoT world, okay? Probably in the following years, we will see many IoT devices which saying that they use an ASCOM, which is NIST standards. 